This is a continuation of the first book of Adam and Eve, also known as the conflict of Adam and Eve with Satan. Picking up at chapter 16. After this, Adam and Eve ceased not to stand in the cave, praying and weeping until the morning dawned upon them. And when they saw the light return to them, they restrained from fear and strengthened their hearts. Then Adam began to come out of the cave and when he came out to the mouth of it and stood and turned his face towards the east and saw the sun rise in glowing rays and felt the heat thereof on his body, he was afraid of it and thought in his heart that this flame came forth to plague him. He wept then and smote upon his breast and fell upon the earth on his face and made his request, saying, O Lord, plague me not, neither consume me, nor yet take away my life from the earth. For he thought the Son was God. Inasmuch as while he was in the garden and heard the voice of God and the sound he made in the garden and feared him, Adam never saw the brilliant light of the sun, neither did the flaming heat thereof touch his body. Therefore was he afraid of the sun when flaming rays of it reached him. He thought God meant to plague him therewith all the days he had decreed for him. For Adam also said in his thoughts, as God did not plague us with darkness, behold, he has caused this sun to rise and to plague us with burning heat. But while he was thus thinking in his heart, the word of God came unto him and said, O oh Adam, arise and stand up. This son is not God, but it has been created to give light by day, of which I spake unto thee in the cave, saying that the dawn would break forth and there would be light by day. But I am God, who comforted thee in the night, and God ceased to commune with Adam. Chapter 17 And then Adam and Eve came out of the mouth of the cave, and went into the gardens, and went towards the garden. But as they drew near to it, before the western gate from which Satan came when he deceived Adam and Eve, they found the serpent that became Satan coming at the gate and sorrowfully licking the dust and wiggling on his breast on the ground by reason of the curse that fell upon it from God. And whereas aforetime the serpent was the most exalted of all beasts, now it was changed and become slippery and the meanest of them all. And it crept on its breast and went on its belly. And whereas it was the fairest of all beasts, it had been changed and was become the ugliest of them all. Instead of feeding on the best food, now it turned to eat the dust. Instead of dwelling as before, in the best places, now it lived in the dust. And whereas it had been the most beautiful of all beasts, all of which stood dumb at its beauty, it was now abhorred of them. And again, whereas it dwelt in one beautiful abode to which all other animals came from elsewhere, and where it drank, they drank also of the same. Now, after it had become venomous by reason of God's curse, all beasts fled from its abode and would not drink of the water it drank, but fled from it. Chapter 18 
when the accursed serpent saw Adam and Eve, it swelled its head, stood on its tail, and with eyes blood red, did as if it would kill them. It made straight for Eve and ran after her, while Adam, standing by, wept because he had not no stick in his hand wherewith to smite the serpent and knew not how to put it to death. But with a heart burning for Eve, Adam approached the serpent and held it by the tail. When it turned towards him and said unto him, O Adam, because of thee and of Eve, I am slippery. Then by reason of its great strength, it threw down Adam and Eve and pressed upon them as if it would kill them. But God sent an angel who threw the serpent away from them and raised them up. Then the word of God came to the serpent and said unto it, In the first instance I made thee glib and made thee go upon thy belly, but I did not deprive thee of speech. Now, however, be thou dumb and speak no more, thou and thy race, because in the first place has the ruin of my creatures happened through thee, and now thou wishest to kill them? Then the serpent was struck dumb and spake no more. And a wind came to blow from heaven by command of God that carried away the serpent from Adam and Eve, threw it on the seashore, and it landed in India. Chapter 19 But Adam and Eve wept before God, and Adam said unto him, O Lord, when I was in the cave, I said this to thee, my Lord, that the beast of the field would rise and devour me and cut off my life from the earth. Then Adam, by reason of what had befallen him, smote upon his breast and fell upon the earth like a corpse. Then came to him the word of God. who raised him and said unto him, O Adam, not one of these beasts will be able to hurt thee, because when I made the beast and other moving things come to thee in the cave, I did not let the serpent come with them, lest it should rise against you, make you tremble, and the fear of it should fall into your hearts. For I knew that that accursed one is wicked. Therefore, would I not let it come near you with the other beasts. But now strengthen thy hearts and fear not. I am with thee until the end of the days I have determined on thee. Chapter 20, and then Adam wept and said, O oh God, remove us to some other place that the serpent may not come again near us and rise against us, lest it find thy handmaid Eve alone and kill her, for its eyes are hideous and evil. But God said to Adam and Eve, henceforth fear not. I will not let it come near you. I have driven it away from you. From this mountain, neither will I leave in it aught to hurt you. Then Adam and Eve worshiped before God and gave him thanks and praised him for having delivered them from death. Chapter 21 Then Adam and Eve went in search of the garden and the heat beat like a flame on their faces, and they sweated from the heat 
and wept before the Lord. But the place where they wept was nigh unto a high mountain facing the western gate of the garden. And then Adam threw himself down from the top of that mountain. His face was torn and his flesh was flayed. Much blood flowed from him and he was nigh unto death. Meanwhile, Eve remained standing on the mountain, weeping over him, thus lying. And she said, I wish not to live after him, for all that he did to himself was through me. Then she threw herself after him, and she was torn and scotched by stones and remained lying as dead. But the merciful God, who looks upon his creatures, looked upon Adam and Eve as they lay dead. And he sent his word unto them and raised them and said to Adam, O oh Adam, all this misery which thou hast wrought upon thyself will not avail against my rule, neither will it alter the covenant of the 5,500 years. Chapter 22. Then Adam said to God, I wither in the heat. I am faint from walking. And I am loath of this world and I know not when thou would bring me out of it to rest. Then the Lord God said unto Adam, O oh Adam, it cannot be at present, not until thou hast ended thy days. Then shall I bring thee out of this wretched land. And Adam said unto God, While I was in the garden, I knew neither heat nor languor, neither moving about nor trembling nor fear. But now since I came to this land, all this affliction has come upon me. Then God said to Adam, so long as thou wast keeping my commandment, my light and my grace rested on thee. But when thou didst transgress my commandment, sorrow and misery befell thee in this land. And Adam wept and said, O oh Lord, do not cut me off for this, neither smite me with heavy plagues, nor yet repay me according to my sin. For we of our own will did transgress thy commandment and forsook thy law and sought to become gods like unto thee when Satan the enemy deceived us. Then God said unto Adam, because thou hast borne fear and trembling in this land, languor and suffering, treading and walking about, going upon this mountain and dying from it, I will take all this upon myself in order to save thee. Chapter 23 Then Adam wept more and said, O oh God, have mercy on me, so far as to take upon thee that which I will do. But God took his word from Adam and Eve. Then Adam and Eve stood on their feet. And Adam said to Eve, Gird thyself, and I also will gird myself. And she girded herself as Adam told her. Then Adam and Eve took stones and placed them in a shape of an altar. And they took leaves from the trees outside the garden with which they wiped from the face of the rock the blood 
they had spilled. But that which they had dropped on the sand, they took together with the dust wherewith it was mingled and offered it up upon the altar as an offering unto God. Then Adam and Eve stood under the altar and wept, thus entreating God, forgive us of our trespass, our Father, who art in heaven, be gracious unto us. O Lord, our God, hallowed be thy name, and let the remembrance of thee be glorified in heaven above and upon earth here below. Let thy kingdom reign over us now and forever. The holy men of old saint remit and forgive unto all men whatsoever they have done unto me. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil thing. For thine is the kingdom, and thou shalt reign in glory forever and forevermore. Amen. And our sin. And look upon us with thine eyes of mercy. For when we were in the garden, our praises and our hymns went up before thee without ceasing. But when we came into this strange land, pure praise was no longer ours, nor righteous prayer, nor understanding hearts, nor sweet thoughts, nor just counsels, nor long discernment, nor upright feelings. Neither is our bright nature left us. But our body is changed from the similitude in which it was at first, when we were created. Yet now look upon our blood, which is offered upon these stones, and accepted at our hands, like the praise we used to sing unto thee at first, when in the garden, and Adam began to make more requests unto God. Chapter 24 Then the merciful God, good and lover of all men, looked upon Adam and Eve and upon their blood, which they had held up as an offering unto him, without an order from him for so doing. But he wondered at them and accepted their offerings. And God sent from his presence a bright fire that consumed their offering. He smelt the sweet savor of their offering and showed them mercy. Then came the word of God to Adam and said unto him, O Adam, as thou hast shed thy blood, so will I shed my own blood when I become flesh of thy seed. And as thou didst die, O Adam, so also will I die. And as thou didst build an altar, so also will I make for thee an altar on the earth. And as thou didst offer thy blood upon it, so also will I offer my blood upon an altar on the earth. And as thou didst sue for forgiveness through that blood, so also will I make my blood forgiveness of sins and blot out transgression in it. And now, behold, I have accepted thy offering O oh, Adam, but the days of thy covenant wherein I have bound thee are not fulfilled. When they are fulfilled, then will I bring thee back into the garden. Now, therefore, strengthen thy heart. And when sorrow comes upon thee, make me an offering and I will be favorable to thee.
chapter 25. But God knew that Adam had in his thoughts that he should often kill himself and make an offering to him of his blood. Therefore did he say unto Adam, O Adam, do not again kill thyself as thou didst by throwing thyself down from that mountain. But Adam said unto God, It was in my mind to put an end to myself at once, for having transgressed thy commandment, and for my having come out of the beautiful garden, and for the bright light of which thou hast deprived me, and for the praises which poured forth from my mouth without ceasing, and for the light that covered me. Yet of thy goodness, O oh God, do not away with me altogether, but be favorable to me every time I die, and bring me to life, and thereby it will be made known that thou art a merciful God, who willest not that one should perish, who lovest not that one should fall, and who dost not condemn anyone cruelly, badly, and by whole destruction. Then Adam remained silent. And the word of God came unto Adam, and blessed him, and comforted him, and covenanted with him, that he would save him at the end of the days determined upon him. This then was the first offering Adam made unto God, and so it became his custom to do so. Chapter 26. Then Adam took Eve, and they began to return to the cave of treasures where they dwelt. But when they neared it and saw it from afar, heavy sorrow fell upon Adam and Eve when they looked at it. And then Adam said to Eve, When we were on the mountain, we were comforted by the word of God that conversed with us. And the light that came from the east shone over us. But now the word of God is hidden from us and the light that shone over us is so changed as to disappear and let darkness and sorrow come upon us. And we are forced to enter this cave which is like a prison wherein darkness covers us so that we are parted from each other and thou canst not see me neither can I see thee when Adam had said these words they wept and spread their hands before God for they were full of sorrow and they entreated God to bring the sun to them to shine on them so that darkness returned not upon them and they came not again under this covering of rock. And they wished to die rather than see darkness. Then God looked upon Adam and Eve and upon their great sorrow. And upon all they had done with fervent heart. On account of all the trouble they were in, instead of their former well-being, and on account of all the misery that came upon them in a strange land, therefore God was not wroth with them, nor impatient with them, but he was long-suffering and forbearing towards them, as towards the children he had created. Then came the word of God to Adam and said unto him, Adam, as for the sun, if I were to take it and bring it to thee, days, hours, years, and months would all come to naught. And the covenant I have made thee would never be fulfilled. But thou shouldest then be turned and left in a long plague 
and no salvation would be left to thee forever. Yea, rather, bear long and calm thy soul while thou abidest night and day until the fulfillment of the days and the time of my covenant is come. Then shall I come and save thee, O Adam, for I do not wish that thou be afflicted. And when I look at all the good things in which thou didst live and why thou camest out of them, then would I willingly show thee mercy. But I cannot alter the covenant that has gone out of my mouth. Else would I have brought thee back into the garden. When, however, the covenant is fulfilled, then shall I show thee and thy seed mercy and bring thee into a land of gladness where there is neither sorrow nor suffering, but abiding joy and gladness and light that never fails and praises that never cease and a beautiful garden that shall never pass away. And God said unto Adam, be long suffering and enter the cave for the darkness of which thou wast afraid shall only be 12 hours long and when ended, light shall arise. Then when Adam heard these words from God, he and Eve worshiped before him and their hearts were comforted. They returned into the cave after their custom. While tears flowed from their eyes, sorrow and welling came from their hearts and they wished their soul would leave their body. And Adam and Eve stood praying until the darkness of night came upon them. And Adam was hid from Eve and she from him. And they remained standing in prayer. Chapter 27 When Satan the hater of all good, saw how they continued in their prayer and how God communed with them and comforted them and how he had accepted their offering. Satan made an apparition. He began with transforming his host. In his hands was a flashing fire and they were in a great light. He then placed his throne near the mouth of the cave because he could not enter into it by reason of their prayers. And he shed light into the cave until the cave glistened over Adam and Eve while his host began to sing praises. And Satan did this in order that when Adam saw the light, he should think within himself that it was a heavenly light and that Satan's hosts were angels and that God had sent them to watch the cave and give him light in the darkness. So that when Adam came out of the cave and saw them and Adam and Eve bowed to Satan, then he would overcome Adam thereby and a second time humble him before God. When, therefore, Adam and Eve saw the light, fancying it was real, they strengthened their hearts. Yet, as they were trembling, Adam said to Eve, Look at that great light, and at those many songs of praise, and at that host standing outside that do not come in to us. Do not tell us what they say or whence they come or what is the meaning of this light. What those praises are, wherefore they have been sent hither and why they do not come in. If they were from God, they would come to us in the cave and would tell us their errand. 
And then Adam stood up and prayed unto God with a fervent heart and said, O oh Lord, is there in the world another God than thou, who created angels and filled them with light and sent them to keep us? Who would come with them? But lo, we see these hosts that stand at the mouth of the cave. They are in a great light. They sing loud praises. If they are of some other God than thou, tell me. And if they are sent by thee, inform me of the reason for which thou hast sent them. No sooner had Adam said this, than an angel from God appeared unto him in the cave and said unto Adam, O oh Adam, fear not. This is Satan and his host. He wishes to deceive you as he deceived you at first. For the first time, he was hidden in the serpent. But this time he has come to you in a similitude of an angel of light in order that when you worshiped him, he might enthrall you in the very presence of God. Then the angel went from Adam and seized Satan at the opening of the cave and stripped him of the faint he had assumed and brought him in his own hideous form to Adam and Eve, who were afraid of him when they saw him. And the angel said to Adam, this hideous form has been his enemy since God made him fall from heaven. He could have not come near you in it. Therefore did he transform himself into an angel of light. Then the angel drove away Satan and his host from Adam and Eve and said unto them, Fear not, God who created you will strengthen you. And the angel went from them. But Adam and Eve remained standing in the cave. No consolation came to them. They were divided in their thoughts. And when it was morning, they prayed and then went out to seek the garden for their hearts were towards it and they could get no consolation for having left it. Chapter 28. But when the wily Satan saw them, that they were going to the garden, he gathered together his host and came in the appearance of a cloud, intent on deceiving them. But when Adam and Eve saw him thus in a vision, they thought they were angels of God to comfort them about their having left the garden or to bring them back again into it. And Adam spread his hands unto God, beseeching him to make him understand what they were. Then Satan, the hater of all good, said unto Adam, O oh Adam, I am an angel of the great God, and behold, the host that surround me. God has sent me and them to take thee and bring thee to the border of the garden northwards to the shore of the clear sea and bathe thee and Eve in it and raise you to your former gladness that ye return again to the garden. These words sank into the heart of Adam and Eve. Yet God withheld his word from Adam and did not make him understand at once, but waited to see his strength, whether he would be overcome as Eve was in the garden or whether he would prevail. Then Satan called Adam and Eve and said, Behold, we go to the sea of water. And they began to go. And Adam and Eve followed them at some little distance. But when they came to the mountain to the north of the garden, a very high mountain, 
without any steps to the top of it. The devil drew near to Adam and Eve and made them go to the top in reality and not in a vision, wishing as he did to throw them down and kill them and to wipe off their name from the earth so that this earth should remain to him and his host alone. Chapter 29. But when the merciful God saw that Satan wished to kill Adam with his manifold devices and saw that Adam was meek and without guile, God spake unto Satan in a loud voice and cursed him. Then he and his host fled and Adam and Eve remained standing on the top of the mountain. Whence they saw below them the wide world, high above which they were. But they saw none of the hosts which anon were by them. They wept, both Adam and Eve, before God and begged for forgiveness of him. Then came the word of God to Adam, and said unto him, Know thy and understand concerning this Satan, that he seeks to deceive thee and thy seed after thee. And Adam wept before the Lord God, and begged and entreated him to give him something from the garden as a token to him wherein to be comforted. And God looked upon Adam's thought, and sent the angel Michael as far as the sea that reaches unto India to take from thence golden rods and bring them to Adam. This did God in his wisdom in order that these golden rods being with Adam in the cave should shine forth with light in the night around him and put an end to his fear of the darkness. Then the angel Michael went down by God's order, took golden rods as God had commanded him and brought them to God. Chapter 30. After these things, God commanded the angel Gabriel to go down to the garden and say to the sheriff who keep it, Behold, God has commanded me to come into the garden and to take thence sweet-smelling incense and give it to Adam. Then the angel Gabriel went down by God's order to the garden and told the sheriff as God had commanded him, the sheriff then said, Well, and Gabriel went in and took the incense. Then God commanded the angel Raphael to go down to the garden. Then Raphael went in and took the myrrh. The golden rods were from the Indian Sea, where there are precious stones. The incense was from the eastern border of the garden, and the myrrh from the western border, whence bitterness came upon Adam. And the angels brought these three things to God by the tree of life in the garden. Then God said to the angels, dip them in the spring of water, then take them and sprinkle their water over Adam and Eve that they be a little comforted in their sorrow and give them to Adam and Eve. And the angels did as God had commanded them. And they gave all those things to Adam and Eve on the top of the mountain upon which Satan had placed them when he sought to make an end of them. And when Adam saw the golden rods, the incense and the myrrh, 
He was rejoiced and wept because he thought that the gold was a token of the kingdom whence he had come. That the incense was a token of the bright light which he had been taken from. And that the myrrh was a token of the sorrow in which he was. Chapter 31 After these things God said unto Adam, Thou didst ask of me something from the garden, to be comforted therewith. And I have given thee these three tokens as a consolation to thee, that thou trust in me and in my covenant with thee. For I will come and save thee, and king shall bring me when in the flesh, gold, incense, and myrrh. Gold as a token of my kingdom, incense as a token of my divinity, and myrrh as a token of my suffering and of my death. But, O oh Adam, put these by thee in the cave the gold that it may shed light over thee by night, the incense that thou smell its sweet savor, and the myrrh to comfort thee in thy sorrow. When Adam heard these words from God, he worshiped before him. He and Eve worshiped him and gave him thanks because he had dealt mercifully with them. Then God commanded the three angels, Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael, each to bring what he had brought and give it to Adam. And they did so, one by one. And God commanded Suriel and Salathiel to bear up Adam and Eve and bring them down from the top of the high mountain and to take them to the cave of treasures. There they laid the gold on the south side of the cave, the incense on the eastern side, and the myrrh on the western side, for the mouth of the cave was on the north side. The angels then comforted Adam and Eve and departed. The gold was 70 rods, the incense 12 pounds, and the myrrh 3 pounds. These remained by Adam in the house of treasures. Therefore was it called of concealment. But other interpreters say it was called the cave of treasures by reason of the bodies of righteous men that were in it. These three things did God give to Adam on the third day after he had come out of the garden. In token of the three days, the Lord should remain in the heart of the earth. And these three things, as they continued with Adam in the cave, gave him light by night, and by day they gave him a little relief from his sorrow. End of chapter 31. These books, again, cannot be found in the Bible. I will be continuing with more of the first book of Adam and Eve, also known as the conflict of Adam and Eve with Satan. God wants you to find God and you must find God for yourself. Continue to find God. Continue to read the Bible. Continue to read different sources because in the Bible it does say there are hidden mysteries and they shall be revealed. God is choosing select individuals to speak out this word 
And this generation is the most blessed generation to ever grace this planet Earth. Because we never had to see Jesus Christ in the flesh. We never spoke or saw God the way Adam and Eve did. But yet we believe and yet we carry forth. Jesus said that we shall go about and do greater works than what he has done because he is going to be with the Father. Do you believe that you can do greater works than what Jesus Christ has done? You must believe these things because Jesus said these things. Fear not appears in the Bible 365 times. That is one fear not for every single day of the week. One for every single day of the year and one for every single day of your life. If you start saying it now, if you believe it. And then once you go to belief, you get to the level of knowing. You must know God. You must know Jesus. You must know the Holy Spirit. You know your birthday. You know where you live. How can you not know God? Be blessed and stay phenomenal. Plan strategically for your life. Our life will strategically plan for you. Amen.